Previously on The Biggest Loser, you will be competing in a pentathlon. The seven remaining contestants competed in the first ever Biggest Loser pentathlon, fighting for the ultimate reward, immunity. And Antone earned the top prize. Antone, you have immunity on the scale tonight. For the first time this season, the contestants face the scale as singles. No matter what happens, I'm good. And Bonnie was the first victim of the yellow line. Find it within you. Burn! Keep moving, no time! Come on, let's go! Now don't be at the bottom anymore! Reach for the top! Let's go! Come on, come on, stop! You got this! Beautiful! On your mark! Get set! Go! Oh my. I come down to the kitchen and it's not our normal kitchen. Oh. Wow. <sighs> it's filled with all kinds of Thanksgiving food. It's Thanksgiving! Oh my gosh. Oh man. I see the food. Dots are connecting. Satellites are linking up. You know, if it looks like a temptation, smells like a temptation, it's a temptation. Obviously, Thanksgiving is a very emotional week. I mean, Thanksgiving is tied to those feelings you have, the opportunity to relax with your friends, your loved ones. But a lot of people use it as an excuse to relax on their diets, too. The average American will eat 4,500 calories on Thanksgiving, including over 200 grams of fat. The Four Biggest Loser, I blew that away, I promise you. I, I bet I ate 10, 15,000 calories. Everybody feels comfortable with eating. Everybody's like, well, it's Thanksgiving. Normally we eat poorly, but when the holidays come around, we eat poorly on steroids. That's what we do is eat. You know, we get together in big groups and we grub. So many different kinds of foods. I had one plate that was just all the sides, and then I had another plate that was going to be all the, the turkey and the ham and the bread. We eat all day. I mean, we're like the big fat Greek wedding people, only we're hicks. <laughs> By now, you know plenty of reasons to avoid indulging on Thanksgiving. Well, I have three reasons that might change your mind today. Have a look. You could get $500 for every pound you lose this week. A $25,000 home gym from Cybex. Oh the premium brand of fitness equipment. Oh my gosh. The same equipment you use on the ranch, including the Biggest Loser Arc Trainer, will be delivered to your home to help you work off whatever you eat, and then some. And then, of course, the last prize. Wow. A three-pound advantage on the scale. A three-pound advantage on the scale of the weigh-in is huge. I mean, at this stage of the game, it might as well be immunity for somebody. Ramon, you know you were less than a pound from falling yeah. below that yellow line last night. Yep. What do you want? Oh, I, I, I want the three-pound advantage. You know, I mean, that's huge. That's, you know, to earn, earn another week here is, is everything. In front of you, there are 100 dishes. I will give you five minutes to eat as many dishes as you want. But it is not about how much you eat. Under each dish is a number. When it's over, the person who has the lowest number gets to pick first of the three prizes. It's poker. It has nothing to do with what food is on which plate. It's just all about the luck of the draw. The person with the second lowest number gets to pick the second of the remaining prizes, and the person with the third lowest number gets that remaining prize. If you have the three lowest numbers, you could end up with all three prizes. The temptation today was really the prizes, not the food. The bad part about it is that somebody's gonna eat some of this food that's not that great, and they're not gonna get anything. But to be able to get a three pound advantage and to be the one that got that three pound advantage, the trade-off may be worth it. All right, guys, five minutes begins now. Everybody wants that three pound advantage. I know John's gonna eat something. John's a donut guy. John has to eat something. Anton grabs ham. Becky goes right for the pumpkin pie. Every 
everyone immediately goes up and grabs a plate and heads back to their podium. And I'm like, y'all are all going to eat. Everyone's eating. Oh, my gosh. For temptation, you're always like, don't eat, don't eat. You don't want this. You don't want this. You're here for a reason. You're here to get healthy. I was just dumbfounded by the fact that everyone was eating. I can't believe you're all eating. <laughs> well, crud. This may be the last thing I eat today. <laughs> My first instinct is never eat for a temptation. But three pound advantage, I mean, that could be the difference between me staying here or going home. I can't believe we're all eating this. It's a three pound advantage, Sonny. Come on. I gave it to peer pressure. Come on. <laughs> As I'm eating my turkey and gravy, you know, it's tough to get down. But as I turn that plate over and I'm looking at my number, you know, I get a 52. It's 50-50 shot to get this smaller number, you know, and that smaller number equals that three pound advantage. You know, I want that so bad, I can taste it. And if it has to taste like turkey covered in gravy, I gotta do it. More turkey right. for Ramon. Ooh. The first number I get was a 96. Six. A hundred is the biggest number. Are you kidding me? Becky goes for a bowl of cranberry. Two minutes. So as I'm eating the pumpkin pie, man, can I taste the sugar. I haven't had sugar in weeks. Last time we had an eating temptation, I ate 37 donuts. It was the dreaded week two, and I still put up 15 pounds on a scale. Thinking to myself, hey, I burn calories. I'm the calorie punisher. I've just got to figure out how bad do I want this three pound advantage. I finish my one dish, I'm not happy with my number. And I just thought I'd step out and I'd kind of take a look and survey all the dishes. But let's learn when to say when. I decided one, I had one, so I just went back to my podium. No matter what number I was gonna get, I was only gonna eat that one thing. You know, I was only gonna buy one lottery ticket. Pull that card out and I look down at it, I'm like. That was my one shot. I pull the number out and it's 81. I'm thinking, Man, I just ate all these calories for a number 81. John didn't go back. I mean, John wolfed his pie down before I could finish half my ham. Now I'm thinking he's got a good number. Then I see Vinny doesn't go back. I'm thinking, I'm beat. I've got to get a lower number, so I'm diving right back in. He goes for cranberry. You better eat fast. You only got that one minute left. <laughs> because of my hesitation in the beginning, by the time I finished the ham, there was just no way that I could go and grab something else and get it down in time. So I just thought, well, I'm just going to hope for the best with the number I got. I know. <laughs> I'll be so sick. 30 seconds. Oh, God. Five, four, three, two, and that's time. Bad move, bro. Ugh. The food was horrible. Of course, it tasted like turkey and gravy like Thanksgiving. But, you know, for me, it's like I'm living a much healthier lifestyle now. I'm eating way healthier food. And it was just a shock to the body. It's time to reveal what your numbers are. The three lowest numbers get to choose the three prizes. We're going to start with Becky. So you have two chances to win here. Well, this first one's not all that great. <laughs> so her first number was 96. 96. I could definitely see why you went back for more. Yeah, that was the first one. 38. OK. Well, I shouldn't have given in to peer pressure. 85. Let's see where Anton falls. The uh, first number was 81. So you went back, time. tried again. And the second time, I got 46. Wow. OK. Yeah. So right now, Becky is in the lead with 38, and Anton is second with 46. And then Anton again with 81. John. Or. <laughs> <laughs> Try to pull a quick one. This to me clearly shows how much I've grown since week two. For me to be able to come in here and just have one slice of pie, I feel like I won the temptation. Ramon. This was actually my second number, so bad move going back a second time. You beat Anton for third place. And my lower number, 52. 52. Okay, so we have 38 for Becky, 46 for Antone, and 52 for Ramon. I think I got this three pounds in the bag. Yay! Third, Vinny, what do you have to say? 
I kind of made the same decision that no matter what, I was going to take one shot at this. And I started looking at all the plates, and there was one that kept sticking out to me. Whenever I walked up and I made my choice. Whoa. Wow. Right now, Becky, you are in the lead. You are one person away from winning that three-pound advantage. If Vinny has lower than 38, he has taken first place away from you, Becky. Vinny, what's your number? <clears throat> well, as soon as I walked up, I kind of made the same decision that no matter what, I was going to take one shot at this. Walked up, and I made my choice. Whoa. Wow. I got a 10. One plate of ham, and he gets a 10? How does that happen? You know, I knew I wasn't going to go back up no matter what, but I felt good when I got that number. Wow, all right. So, Vinny, you have the first choice. You get to pick, of those three prizes, what you want. I feel like the three-pound advantage is definitely the smartest thing to go with. Vinny's got the three-pound advantage. Translation, everyone else in the house has a three-pound disadvantage. So now, I've got my work cut out for me. Becky, you get second choice. I'm going to take the home gym. All right. I am so thrilled to be able to get this gym, uh, not just for me, but this is also a gift for my family, too. I know my son will be excited. He auditioned with me for the show, and now I can just bring the gym to him. All right, Antone, your choice has been made for you. Pretty good. That's awesome. Got to lose a lot of weight this week, man. I wanted the three-pound advantage, but the money is going to make for a great Christmas for all my kids and my family. So that's a great incentive for me this week. Every mile that I run, every step that I take, it is another step towards another $500. And by the way, number one was oh. right uh, Congratulations, and I'll see you all at the challenge. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey what's hey, up? Hey. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving everybody. Come on. <laughs> I'm seeing one red shirt. Yep. So what, what's going on? We Something went down. temptation before? challenge today, a Thanksgiving temptation challenge. Okay. Sounds like Thanksgiving food, huh? All the good yeah. stuff. We all ate. And I ended up getting first, and I got a three-pound advantage. Wow. That's, wow. That's huge. So I was like, I'll trade 230 calories of red meat for a three-pound advantage <laughs> on the scale. And I got second prize. Which was what? The $25,000 Cybex Home Gym. Oh, that's fantastic. God. So uh, I uh, win $500 for every pound I lose this week on the scale. Three prizes, black team, three people, first, second, third. That's pretty cool. Shoulder press for the ceiling from your nose to the ceiling. Ready, go. Nice. Dig deep. Go down. Do three again. Three. Get down there. Right now, I'm looking at the last man standing. There's only one member left on the red team. And more than ever before, failure is not an option. Hard work. Dedication. Dedication. Hard work. Dedication. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Dole Vet, he and I are tied together in this. If I get sent home, judging by last season, Dole Vet's gonna get sent home too. Am I gonna let that happen? Oh, no, I'm not. By the time I'm done with both, gonna be sweating, because we got nothing but work in front of us, okay? That's fine. I ain't going down. I'm not leaving. I have no desire to leave until I'm a finalist. Dolvet's gonna be right there in that desire. That pace, that control, three pound disadvantage, one man standing, a lot to fight for. A lot to fight for. Our back is up against the wall. We have nothing but fight in us, and we gotta use it. We all we got, baby. We all we got. Thanksgiving week. Five seconds to go. We got to burn off a Thanksgiving dinner today. $500 a pound. I will take that any day. $500 a pound. My motivation is awesome. I'm thinking now, each step I take is like a dime. You know, every time I lift weights, it's like, you know what, there's another dollar. What more incentive do you need? You're going to bust your ass, and you're going to get every single thing that you need to get done every single day. Becky wanted that three-pound advantage because that woman is smart. She needs it. She weighs 182 pounds right now. That's tiny in this world. You are a little bitty girl now. A little bitty girl that's going to have to work as hard, if not harder, than that big man right over there and Mr. Three-Pound Advantage right there, too. You bet. Now I'm the oldest, and I'm the smallest person in the house. I have to work very hard this week. I don't want to be below that yellow line again. Welcome to the 100 pound week. 
my boy is going to have a 100 pound week. Here's the thing about Vinny's three pound advantage. That's great. I'll take every pound that I can get. But Vinny's lost 91 pounds. I got to get him in the 100 pound mark. So he's going to be losing at least nine pounds this week. I need Vinny to drop over 100 pounds. This guy should have lost 100 pounds weeks ago. Three pound advantage this week, but you are not going to let that hold you back that one single minute. You are not going to hold anything back. We're going to get that 100 pounds. You we're going to get that 100 pounds. Start happy feet. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Touch. Everybody in the house now knows what to eat, how to exercise, what to do. They've learned all those things. Now it's about that special little extra, is who does that little extra? Uh, 10 oh. seconds to go. Stay with it, Sunny. Oh. Come on, Ramon. With Vinny having the three pound advantage, you know, that pretty much guarantees him a spot in the next week. So really, it's the five of us working hard to get them spots above that yellow line. Good, keep going. Last few seconds, last five seconds, finish strong. We are definitely competitive people, all six of us, and it, it's business right now. This is war. We're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep pushing, we're gonna keep fighting. You hear me? You're no quitting me. I never quit on the scale, never hold back. I ain't gonna start now, right? Let's go. Count one on you. One. John's just never going to be happy, right? He just seems never satisfied. Why do you think that is? I don't know. He is not going to rest until he's made it into the finals. Those numbers on the scale are just like milestones to get to the finals. So that's why he can't just like jump up and down every time he gets up on that scale where everyone's saying celebrate, celebrate. He hasn't achieved what he's trying to achieve. That's all he can think about. If you can't celebrate it, then you don't think you've achieved anything. And if you don't think you've achieved anything, it'll be that easier to go back. That's <laughs> exactly right. That's exactly right. And I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this right now, as I'm standing here in front of you, mark my words, he will gain everything back. Every bit of it. You keep moving no matter what. You pull up. Come on, let's go. Let's go. It's time to work. You know, this isn't a day spa. This is a house of pain. Well, I like the pain. We have no time to pause. Everybody in that house is still moving. They're still going. Three pound disadvantage. Flip it, let's go! Get into it, let's go, let's go, let's go. Keep moving, let's go. Go, 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 go! Yes, yes, come on. Work. That's how you get the job done, baby. John started out here in the ranch on his own island. Bonnie gave him some sense of comfort. I think now that she's gone, he's retrieved back to that island. So the most important thing to me as John's trainer is that he and I create a bond. We got a lot, a lot, a lot of things going against us right now. Yeah. But you know what? It's been a challenge for you since day one. Yeah. It's been a challenge for me since day one. And somehow, some way, we persevere. One thing I don't want, though, from you. Yeah, what's that? I don't want a lack of appreciation. When you're on that scale, you made me feel like the work we put in wasn't good enough. Oh, you know what I mean? Well, that's not my intention. You know, everybody always wants to be genuine on the scale, right? Yeah. So if I'm genuinely disappointed, what's wrong with that? And, no, no, no. and to me, it's like, you know what? If I don't that's think, how I feel, if that's how you feel, then, how then that's feel. how you feel. And, and you know what? And that should be good enough, but it's not good enough. You know, for someone to lose 19 pounds in two weeks, at what point does that say, not bad, John? This is a tremendous example that John has walls up that need to come down. I think his expectation is so high, but when you're at that extreme, my only fear is that, what's the other extreme? I don't mind having high standards for myself. Here's the trouble is if my high standards lead me to relapse and put weight back on. That's where the high standards are a problem. Why do you think I'm if talking to If the high standards you? build on each other and it continues and it grows and it's all good. That's, John, yeah. without me having to say it, you said it. That's why I'm talking to you, yeah. John. I think that champions have high goals. You know, and I feel like a champion now. I feel, you know, I feel like I did when I was in my early 20s. I feel like there's so much I can do. If I was at home watching, 
I would be mad at me for not dropping double digits. Millions of people want to be where I am right now. I'm here, not them. Work hard, don't complain, get it done. I had better work hard. I better work harder than anybody else. I got your spot. That's why you don't celebrate a nine pound loss. Right there. I took your spot. Coming up. My sister has struggled with her weight her whole life. For the first time ever, Bob opens up about his family. You can only imagine how I've just like tried to reach her. This should be a really good week for Vinny. I mean, this guy's got a three pound advantage. He's really striving to hit the 100 pound mark. Come in. But we're coming down to the wire, and I want to see what Vinny is really coming home to. All I know is that he is an entertainer, and I know that there's more there. Wait, let me see that picture. Wow, when was this taken? Last December. Every time I look at that picture, I look at it every day. When I look at Lori, she's smiling so big. And it made me realize that even at my worst, she loved me more than anybody's ever loved me, ever, period. So I can't wait for her to see me when I'm at my best. And uh, how much she's gonna love me then. Like you're about to be a husband and a father all at once. More than anything in the world, I wanna be a good dad because what I grew up in was not like that. My girlfriend, Lori, uh, I love her more than anything in the world. She had to fight for that though because <laughs> I love her son, Brennan, just as much as I love her. And how do you think you're gonna um, be the best dad or the best husband? I think in order to be the best dad or best husband, you have to be alive and you have to be there. This man that I see in this picture with that beautiful girl standing beside him, there was a man that was facing death. I let everybody think that I was fine and that I didn't care about it. No one that would see this man would think that he was fine what has really changed. It took that little boy for me to see how much I care about him, how much I want to be that for him and be there for him to make me realize that I had to lose this weight. And I don't ever want to be back to the point where I'm like looking at myself thinking I got to lose 200 pounds to be the size of a regular human. You have been thinking about yourself for such a long time in such a self-destructive way. And now you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to accept that unconditional love from Lori. You have that responsibility to that little boy that's gonna look at you and see the father that you've always wanted to have. I need Vinny to feel that responsibility because that's what's gonna keep him on track. So you you wrote a song? Yeah, I wrote a song about I'd go through anything to get to her. Can I hear it? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Well, I'd stand and face a hurricane, 200 mile an hour wind and rain. I'd gladly welcome all the pain if it leads me to you. The week that we went with Bob and we had to go to that waterfall, it was so hard, but at the end of it, it was something beautiful. And my whole life has been that path. You know, all that hard stuff, you know, that, that I went through, it led me to something great. It led me to something beautiful. I swear to God, I'm never gonna stop till I get to you. Yeah. Oh my Ooh. God, that is fantastic. I was so negligent of myself that I let myself get to a point where I had to leave. I would say to them, thank you so much for letting me take this time away and let me do this because it ensures me so much more. I'm real glad that we had this time. I'm glad. Thank you so much, man. Let's go. Sprint. Good. Right back. There you go. Excellent switch of direction. See the difference. Everybody in the house is working hard. And, you know, we might be in our team colors and we might be with our team trainer, but it's singles. We're going against each other. All day long, you have to be competitive. Perfect. Go. Here on the ranch, there's no time to just slack off. 
But knowing that we're nearing the end, I got to give everything I have. That's what I did last week, and I ended up being the biggest loser, and now I feel like I have a deficit almost. Like, ah, uh, you know, I got to try to make up for it. Good serve. <coughs> Good remote. During the tennis workout, we were doing a lot of tennis drills, and uh, Sunny and Ramon gotten so good already where they can actually play points. So we weren't just doing cardio tennis. Go get it, good girl. They actually can hit the ball really well now and um, actually learn the game. I never thought in a million years that I would enjoy tennis. You know, but this is a good workout. Nice. I never thought that tennis could match up to a treadmill or could match up to the gym. You know, it was a sport. You're running around, you're playing. I know it's going to be a good workout. We're going to be sweating, but can it match up? Good, Ramon. And it does. It smashes the gym. Good, excellent, you guys. Grab some water. Hey. Go, raise it. Five, four, three, two, go, go, go. Quickly, quickly, go, go. For my one-on-one -on -one workout today with Dolvet, what he's decided to do is do some drills that are similar to what I do with my high school football players. Uh, uh, go, John! Go, go, go! Come on! Uh, Come on! Come on! Head up, eyes up, look at me. You fight for what you want. Fight for it, John! Let's go! Let's go! I can't do this without you. And it's just me and you. Everything's at stake for me and John. We're at risk right now to be sent home. You know, John's the last player on the red team. Gotta show up, brother. That's what matters. I wanted to show John, you've come a long way. You have the ability to push your body harder than you've ever done before and be the coach that you never were in the past. Keep it moving, baby. Oh, yeah. It's been a couple of decades since I played ball. You kind of forget exactly what it feels like. Well, I've been reminded exactly what it feels like as a 41-year-old man. I went from being a coach that would just kind of ride around in a golf cart, always looking for an opportunity to sit, to a point where I can go through these drills. Oh, give it all you got! Oh, come on! Tackle it! There you go. Now when you go home, <laughs> you can show those kids. <laughs> Guess what? <sighs> Coach can do it too. Yeah. I'm most looking forward to working with the bigger guys. Yeah. Why? Because I was an overweight lineman growing up. Okay. And I didn't need to be an overweight lineman. I could have just been a lineman who was physically fit. You have no idea how excited I am to get back and show the students. Look what's possible. Hopefully, I'll inspire a couple of them because um, they're great kids. Good. Let's go, babe. Good All stuff right. today. Thank you. Proud of you. Oh, my goodness. Good stuff. I thought you were out to kill me. <laughs> I think it's really nice that we're making Thanksgiving dinner for everybody. I think it's brilliant. I know they're going to love it, too. Well, since Thanksgiving, Anna Delvet and I decided that we would treat the contestants to a Thanksgiving meal, Biggest Loser style. Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> wow. Happy oh Thanksgiving. God. We come down the stairs, and here is a Thanksgiving spread. I mean, they've got turkey and dressing and greens, cranberry applesauce and flan. The table is set, beautiful centerpiece. Everything just looks gorgeous. It can be really tough in this house being away from your family and your friends, especially at this time of the year. So uh, we just thought it'd be nice to just kind of like forget about all the Biggest Loser stuff and just have a nice little Thanksgiving Thank with you. your Biggest Loser family. So what do you think? You want to eat? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go. Dig in. Let's go. All right. It's everything we know and love. It's turkey and, you know, stuffing and gravy. We still get to have all the, all the things we've grown up to love and, you know, that remind us of our family, but it's in a healthy version. I thought you did these things in there. <laughs> this is a very nice surprise because it's week 10. The tension in the house is like a pressure cooker. No one wants to go home. It's nice to kind of pause and just say, you know what, let's reflect on what's really important. You guys are my family now, and let's just be thankful for being here and thankful for the great opportunity we have with Biggest Loser. So guys, it um, would be interesting to know what you're all thankful for. Maybe we can all share our stories. Yeah, I'm definitely thankful for this whole process and that, you know, I, uh, I got to come here and find things that I didn't think I was ever going to find, you know. I, I uh, got to find the love of my life, and, which is awesome. A big reason why I'm thankful today is uh, because I've met the love of my life, Jessica, and 
you know, I'm thinking about her a lot, and I'm thinking, you know, we're going to have a lot of Thanksgivings together because of this ranch. And I'm definitely thankful that I, I'm a new uncle. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is little Tiana. This is my sister's Aww. baby. Aww. Right there. So, uh, and look, she wrote me a little card, you know. Oh, my God. When my sister ha had the baby, father took off. So right away, I stepped in, and I want to be that male figure. It was definitely tough to see my sister raising Tiana you know, by herself and me having to leave right away. But I needed to come here to the Biggest Loser Ranch and make changes in my life so that I can help her. I'm definitely thankful for my family and this is, uh, I love them. Awesome. That's awesome. You know, I have a million things to be thankful for. And uh, I guess for me, coming, coming up the way I did and being raised up the way that I was, I always wanted to have a great family. I always wanted to have you know, a great dad or, or somebody to love me and somebody that I can love. And I'm thankful that no matter how bad life started off, that I'm going to get a chance to become a father. And, uh, you know, every one of y'all have changed my life in so many ways. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, going through this journey together, saving my life, all the trainers, but every, everybody at this table. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When you were growing up, did, were there uh, many big family Thanksgivings that you were you were sitting around being a part of? Yeah, I mean, we we always had the Thanksgiving and everything. You know, picture perfect looking in, you know, mm -hmm. if you saw it. But it's like don't look too close. Every other day, you know, it, it was it was yeah. Don't don't look in the window after the doors closed. You know what I mean? What would we see if we looked in that window? You see a bunch of sad little kids. But not anymore. So I'm over overcome that. And I'm happy with where I've led myself, but also where I've been able to always have help from people around me. When we look into um, your window at Thanksgiving, <laughs> what are we I say? promise you, you'll, you'll see the happiest kid in the world. He'll have everything he needs. He'll work for everything he wants, and I'll never let him down. I always protect him with my life, and all the rest of my family and friends as well. There ain't nobody at this table that I wouldn't jump in front of a bullet for. And, and, you know, give you my life if I had to, so. That's just the way I feel about it. I mean, everybody here has been part of me saving my life. Toast to that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Here we are getting close to the end of it. It'll be a finale before you know it, and, and this will be left behind, but us will forever be friends, will forever be family. I'm thankful for Biggest Loser. I really am. I'm thankful for... Uh, what it's done for my life and how it's changed my life completely. You know, I'm from a, a farm in Tennessee. Uh, we didn't come from a lot of money at all. And I have a sister that I'm extremely close with. And I think that's why I became so attached to you this season, because Sonny reminds me of my sister. My sister is um, a woman that has struggled with her weight her whole life. And, and it's heartbreaking for me because it's like, this is what I do for a living. When Sonny and I had this, uh, this experience in Texas, I'm not gonna cry about this, but um, you know, it was really important to me. It was really important to me because uh, I saw my sister in you. And I saw this woman who had all these active people around her and, um, and you were sitting on the, the sidelines. And I have, tried until I'm, can you, you can only imagine. You can only imagine how I've just like tried to reach, reach her. I've done the, I've done the tough love. I've done the, the, the sympathetic. I've, I've gone every route, but at the end of the day, I can't want it for her. I can't want it for her. I, I have to just be there whenever she's ready for it. I was her. I am her. You know, my whole family tried for years to help me get healthy and change my life. And they encouraged me all the time. And I just wasn't, I just wasn't willing to do it. And I hope that Bob's sister understands that when people try to help her, you know, that it's because they love you. I hope that my sister will see this season of this show and see you and see a woman that didn't want to do this and doesn't like to cook and had every opportunity and just like let it all go by it's extremely special to see bob open up and just kind of be real because that's what we 
uh, as contestants have to do every day. He's putting himself on the same level as everyone else, and he's saying, you know what, I have feelings too. I have things and struggles that I go through as well. And that's what The Biggest Loser Ranch does. It brings it out of you, no matter who you are. Being on this show, everyone says that you have won Willy Wonka's golden ticket, right? With that prize comes great responsibility. And it's about what you can do to all the people that are in your life that you can help. And you help them as much as they can. And if they're not ready, then you wait. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Coming up, everyone fights to win a prize that could mean the difference between staying or going home. This is what happens in Hill. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the top of Inspiration Point. Since the day you arrived, you have experienced more peaks and valleys than I'm sure you could have ever imagined. Of course, to reach the heavens, you gotta go through hell. And that's true for tonight's challenge. On day one, you raced one mile across the desert. Tonight, you are going to race one mile straight up on the Jacob's Ladder. What? That's 5,280 feet. Jacob's Ladder is like, I think, designed by Satan himself. It will definitely be worth it because there are three prizes. But in the spirit of Thanksgiving, if you get a prize, you should give a prize. Yeah. Number one, the Biggest Loser Meal Plan. You're going to give away six months of the Biggest Loser Meal Plan to an eliminated contestant. And you will win six months of the Biggest Loser Meal Plan for yourself for after you go home. Sunny. I heard no cooking. You're right. <laughs> Second prize is $2,500 for you and 2,500 bucks to give to anyone else here. And yet there's more. A one pound advantage for you. But with that comes a one pound disadvantage that you will have to give to someone else here. Nice. One pound advantage pretty much secures you for next week. And giving someone the one pound disadvantage pretty much tells them they're going home. First place gets to choose from the three prizes. Second place gets to choose from the remaining two. And the third place finisher will get the remaining prize. Whoever gets that one pound advantage and disadvantage is in control. They have a lot of power over this next weigh in. If you're ready, we'll get started. We got 5,280 feet to climb. Let's get to it. I really want that pound advantage. I am going to pour my heart and soul into this challenge, and I'm going up against some tough competitors. Everybody left in the house is a threat. Ready, on your mark, get set, go! <laughs> You get on Jacob's Ladder, and the only thing you can think about is getting off of the Jacob's Ladder. This is not a ladder to heaven. This is a ladder to hell. Three minutes in. Ramon in the lead with 224. John's in second place at 219. I'm not winning. I need to win because I need the pound advantage. Something's got to happen. I need to go into, like, beast mode. John takes the lead from Ramon. John now in first place. Sunny in third at 187. John takes off like a bullet. And of course, I'm like, I gotta catch him. I gotta catch him. Ramon and John side by side, fighting for first place. Sunny right behind them. I want the one pound advantage. If I fall below the yellow line, I am going home. Sunny looking to move out of third place. She's chasing down Ramon. Sunny, you just climbed the Empire State Building, 1,250 feet. There's a lot up for grabs, and if the wrong person got a hold of this one pound disadvantage, they could do some damage. We're at the 30 minute mark. John's in first place at 2,033 feet. Only 100 feet behind him is Ramon, 1929. My legs hurt, my back hurts. 
everything hurts more than it ever has. And this is definitely the hardest challenge and the hardest thing I've done in my life. In third place is Sunny. She's at 1,899 feet. She's only 40 feet behind Ramon. Becky in fourth place, 1,575 feet. And it turns at 1,446. Vinny's at 1,063 feet. You just climbed the highly Eiffel Tower. Looks like Sunny and Ramon are neck and neck fighting for second place. Uh. minutes in, Sonny takes second place from Ramon. I passed Ramon. Ah, oh, and it feels so good. I'm like, now I gotta catch John. John holding on to first place, but not by much. Sonny closing in on him, less than 100 feet away. Ramon in third place, right behind Sonny. First, second, and third, all tight, neck and neck. Vinny finding a way to keep going. This is actually hill. This is what happens in hill is an endurance challenge. One mile straight up. Can Sunny catch John? Give her a chance to pick between all three prizes. You are so close. John, 49.82. Oh. 49.32, oh. Sonny. You are right behind him in second place. I desperately need to win this thing, and I'm giving it everything I have to catch John and pass him. She's closing the gap. It's all boiled down to this moment. All I'm thinking about is you have got to push. You've got to disconnect from the pain. Just keep moving. Don't stop. Earlier on The Biggest Loser, wow. the contestants started off the week with a Thanksgiving temptation. It's a three pound advantage, Sonny, come on. And Vinny's luck gained him a three pound advantage. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. 10. One plate of ham and he gets a 10. How does that happen? And at the toughest challenge yet, contestants climbed to new heights. One mile, straight up. All for an advantage on the scale that comes with a price. Giving someone the one pound disadvantage pretty much tells them they're going home. Coming up with a one pound disadvantage at stake, who's going to have the power that could send someone home? <laughs> Five minutes in, you're climbing 5,280 feet. 5,080, John. You are 200 feet away from winning this challenge. I'm out front, and uh, I feel pretty good. I mean, yeah, am I getting a workout? Yeah. Am I using my entire body? Yes. But it kind of, it's kind of creepy, but it feels good. 5,020, Sonny, you are so close. I'm right behind John, and I'm doing everything in my power to catch him. In my mind, I'm repeating words that my husband wrote to me in a letter. You know, he, he wrote, stay focused, compete always, and push to the end. And I keep repeating that over and over in my head like a crazy person. Well, I'm faster than you have this entire time, John. Sonny, you are right behind him. And that's it, John completes this challenge. First place finish, he gets a pick of his prizes. Congratulations, John, you finished in one hour, 29 minutes, 44 seconds. I earned every single foot of that mile. Going from a guy that couldn't even jog an entire mile to being someone who could climb a mile, that's the stuff that keeps your fire burning. Good job, John. I hear that John has finished his mile, and I'm just, I'm bummed. I needed that one pound advantage. That's it. Sunny has finished. She is in second place. I finally reach a mile, and every part of my body is drenched in sweat and aching and hurting. I am thrilled that I'm finished, and um, I'd like to roll the Jacob slider down the hill, but they won't allow me to. You secured second place in an hour and 38 minutes, Sonny. Ramon is just feet away from climbing a mile, 5,280 feet. Bam. Vince, you ready? That's it. Ramon, that is third place. You guys are done. Congratulations. I finished it in an hour and 51 minutes. This is one of the worst and greatest feelings I've ever had in my life. Yeah, I'm hurting, 
but I'm not dead. And I'm gonna get one of these prizes. All right, guys. John, congratulations. You have finished in first place, which means you get your choice of the three prizes. Man, I really want to be here next week. I really do. I'm gonna take the one pound advantage for myself. You will let me know who will get the one pound disadvantage at the weigh-in. If there was one person I would think, I don't want them to have any kind of advantage, and I don't want them to have a, you know, any kind of power to assign a disadvantage to anybody, it would have to be John. John loves control, and he knows this game better than anybody in the house. He would know exactly what to do with it. Sonny, you got second place. What are you choosing? I'm going to choose the meal plan because it's, you know, no secret that I'm not a good cook. You get to pick someone from the previously eliminated players to receive six months, the biggest loser meal plan as well. Who's it going to be? I'm going to give the meal plan to Bonnie. Yay, Bonnie. Bonnie, she had expressed that since her husband had passed away, she doesn't do a whole lot of cooking since there's just her. And I'm sure she's going to be thrilled. Now, Ramon, that means with that smile on your face, that's 2,500 bucks for you. Hell yeah. I must have been praying so hard because Sonny went with the meal plan, and I'm in the green. And you got to pick someone else to receive $2,500. Don't forget your buddy. I got to go with my boy, Vinny. Oh. Hey, hey. Including uh, Vinny. Yeah. All right, guys, congratulations. All six of you have won prizes this week. But we'll see who keeps above the yellow line. So I'll see you guys at the weigh-in. Good luck. Thanks. Awesome. I went all out last night. I wanted the one pound advantage. I didn't care about the disadvantage. Not sure who I'm going to give that pound disadvantage to. I don't know how I'm going to figure that out. But everybody here knows it must be given to someone. The elephant in the room is there's going to be a one pound disadvantage handed yeah. to somebody. Yeah. Oh, dang. And oh. it's going to be one of us. It's one of us mm -hmm. right here. A one pound disadvantage is death for all. I think whoever, yeah, whoever gets that hung around their neck is probably going to go home. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at least be below the yellow line. With John, he is very smart. And he's a great competitor and he's yep. a hard worker and we all know that. But <laughs> I've asked him to give it to me. He got a one pound advantage. And he knows that if, if he gives it to me, you know, I'll still have a two pound advantage. If he gives it to me, it won't affect anybody negatively. That would be the best scenario for everybody else in the house. But it wouldn't be the best scenario for John. Because guess what? That doesn't give him anything. If you're playing the game, what, what's your, what's your best know, move yeah, that you make? Yeah, trying to get into his mind. Oh, you, last week, Sonny hit nine pounds. That's yeah. a huge week for her. It was almost 5% of your body weight. I was um, biggest loser last week, having lost nine pounds, knowing that I typically have a big weight loss followed by a smaller weight loss. You know, I don't know. And he might give me the one pound disadvantage to try to get rid of me. I thought he would pick me a Ramon. Um, Why? That's what I'm asking. I just think that John sees us as a long-term threat, and I think he would probably like to get rid of one of us. He's voted for me once in that room. Mm -hmm. Collectively, as a group, we're nervous because, you know, one of us is going to get this one-pound disadvantage, and we have no way to stop it. You know, it's out of our hands, and the power's totally in John's. I'm not sure if John will take Vinny up on his offer because John, uh, to me, has been a person that could do anything, kind of unpredictable. But whoever John gives this one pound disadvantage to other than Vinny will probably go home. Let's move. Last chance, push it. <laughs> we got a nice, strong last chance workout to do today, people. <laughs> Fun times at the Biggest Loser house. Excellent. Nice little warm up. This is your last chance workout. Thanksgiving. Last chance workout. Just me and you. Just me and you. Having John next to you makes me worry. Makes me remember that he's got the power. <laughs> Clearly, everyone's doing everything they can to try and lose that extra pound that I might be forced to give them. Move, move, move. I mean, that's a terrible thing to have to give somebody. So that's really going to, you know, draw me closer to my fellow contestants. Let's go. Fast walks. Come on. One, two. Vinny has offered that John can take away one of his three pounds. Last chance workout, Vinny. Let's go. You got a three-pound advantage. That's going to be two pounds once John gets through with your ass. 
with it being Thanksgiving, I, I hope that that spirit kind of guides John in his decision. But you never know. Stretch it out wider, 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 wider. Stay low. Anna's bringing out all the stops. You know, she's doing everything we've done in the past, but adding a resistance band. I want that band stretched out. This is your last chance workout. Come on. Fast, fast, happy feet. Perfect, son. Perfect, Ramon. Intensity, intensity, intensity. Making us do more of it. You know, more sets. Touch, uh, touch, touch, uh, touch. Uh. More running on the treadmill. More sprinting outside. Last chance workout. This is your last hill, last chance workout. Just because we had a hard night last night. Doesn't mean anything today. Our day's about this last chance workout. Come on, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Now is the time, people. Now is the time that everybody's looking at everybody else and see who's got the strength to keep it going. Now is the time that everyone starts looking over their shoulder and go, who is it that can beat me? Who is it that can take my spot out of the finals? Who is it? I want to do everything that I can for my contestants to keep them above the yellow line. And in this last chance workout, they are going to feel my heat. Good. That's what I want to see. I want to see somebody get pissed off today. It's going to be you. Right. Slam it. What I want you to think about every single time you slam that thing is you just think about all these people that want to send your ass home. Are you going to let them take that power? Are, they gonna, are you going to let them make that decision for you? No. That's right. Slam it. This was so much harder than the challenge to me. It was just constantly having somebody on me in my, in my face, in my ear. I know it's Bob's way, and I know it's how he motivates people, but it flips the switch in my mind. It makes me think about my childhood and my stepdad when he used to kick me when I was down. I can see you're on the edge. I can see it, and let me tell you, if I didn't give a about you, I wouldn't care, and I'd let you fall below the yellow line, I'd let you go home. But I'm doing this because I care about you, Vinny. I'm doing this because I'm thinking about that girl at home and that little boy that needs you to come back healthy and strong, and I don't want them to get you back yet. They don't get you right now. You're mine, and if you're tired, and if you're busted out, I don't give a I care about what you're going to give me on this treadmill right here and right now because this is where the man is going to come out and Benny. You know, Bob was definitely pissing me off today. In that madness, you know, it was it was making me go harder. Eight, seven, good, Benny. It was making me realize that I wasn't as tired as maybe I thought I was in my mind. You got this. Last chance. I don't care that they're tired. Yeah, they worked really hard last night at that challenge. Did a mile on the Jacob's Ladder. They're exhausted. We have a weigh-in coming up. It is going to get hot and sweaty up in this Let's move. Push, pull, push, pull. Last chance workout. Let's move. How bad you want it? I want it bad. How bad you want it? I want it real bad. Let's go. I actually think that one pound advantage, disadvantage, made Dovet a little more relentless. Five. Burn them. Four. This is it. Last chance, baby. Three. Last chance workout. He's here to help me. He's here to train me. He's not here to coddle me. He's not here to tell me everything's going to be okay. Everything's not going to be okay. Last chance workout. Let's go. Last chance. He wants me to do good. He wants to stay here. He wants me to stay here. And I'm feeling it. Last chance workout, John. What's wrong with you today? Hmm? John definitely walked into the gym today at the last chance workout with not as much energy as I needed him to have. Last chance workout, let's go. John! Put your head up. Stop blowing your head down and breathe. All right? I am so tired. I feel like I have nothing to give. And Dolvet is pouring it on. What's going on there? Why is your head down? What is this about? What is that about? What is that? Let it go. Let it go. Come on. No, you're not. You got to fight. You got to fight, baby. You got to fight. Let it go. You got to fight. Go. Ten more seconds. You got to fight, John. John is trying to take advantage of any opportunity he can rest. It doesn't distract me at all. Let's fight. Let's fight. Good. Come on. You got ten more. Go in it. Go in it. Go in it. Go in it. Go, in it. go, 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 go. We're going to make this happen regardless. Challenge or no challenge, rest or no rest, 
We are here to win. Yes, that just happened. That just happened. It's the last chance to prove we're supposed to be here. We want to blow this thing out the water. We want to send a message, and that message is we are here to stay. Last chance to get this job done. Last chance workout. You did it. You did it. This is our week to shine, bro. This is our week it to is. shine. There's definitely a lot going on in this way. I feel confident enough that I've done my best. But if John gives me that one pound disadvantage, and if my number's like anything like last week, it might be my night. This is Thanksgiving week. Tonight there is plenty to be thankful for. Vinny, you won the temptation. You have a three pound advantage tonight. John, you won the challenge, so you have a one pound advantage on the scale tonight. And it couldn't come at a better time. Not only is your future on the line, so is Dolvet's. If you go, he goes. I've done every single thing I could this week. I worked out as hard as I could, and I did the very best I could. And I can leave here with no regrets. John, there's one thing that could help your cause. At the challenge, you won the right to give anyone else here a one pound disadvantage. Have you decided who it's going to be? I really had to think about it. And everyone understands here that someone's got to get this pound. And I, I started to think that I probably couldn't overcome a two pound difference between Vinny and myself, because Vinny and I have been hitting about the same the last couple of weeks. And so I thought I'd have to go with one of the girls to try and, and improve my own standing here. Are you kidding me? I feel like somebody just knocked the air out of me. I, I just thought, oh my gosh, here it comes. And then I started to think like, you know, who, who do I think is going to have a, a greater weight loss? And ultimately, I had to choose. John, at the challenge, you won the right to give anyone else here a one pound disadvantage. Have you decided who it's going to be? Um, this is a difficult decision. This is a horrible thing that I have to do, but I, it has to be done. And ultimately, I had to choose Sonny. I'm sorry, Sonny. I'm devastated that he's given it to me, and I think immediately I'm, I'm going home. I can't believe he's going to take a pound away from someone on Thanksgiving week who's earned that pound. I think it shows a lot about who John is. Sonny, that means you will have a one pound disadvantage tonight. Let's start the weigh-in. Tonight, the two people with the lowest percentage of weight loss will fall below the yellow line and be up for elimination. John, we're gonna start with you. Not even a peep was said when my name was called to walk up to the scale. It was stone silent. Giving Sunny that one pound disadvantage after she worked hard all week, that's the most difficult thing I've ever had to do on the ranch. John, when you first started this competition, you weighed 445 pounds. Tonight, you have a one pound advantage on the scale. Your current weight is. It's five less pounds than I'll ever be again. Sorry, Dolvet. Sorry, man. And I will leave here with no shame. No disappointment, no regrets. I had a great run. The weigh-in's not over yet, John. I just, I mean, five, that's... Whew, I've never dropped anything that low. Five pounds was neither one of our goals, but a different man is standing on the scale tonight. He's taken a second to say, you know what, it's not my goal, but I gotta appreciate it. You're a different guy, and for that, I say congratulations. No matter what happens, I go back. I'm proud of you. I don't know. It's like congratulations or not congratulations. He is pissed. I can see it. Yeah, uh, clearly, I am sad, OK? No joke. Sad about this. I can't change the number. I wanted an 11. I didn't get it. But I got a 5. Am I pleased with it? No, I'm not pleased with that at all. 
but there's only so much that I can do. I'm human. That plateau that I've been worried about for weeks and weeks and weeks, it happened. Five pounds. It's over. Stick a fork in me. I'm going home, Dolvat's going home. John, you lost five pounds this week, and with that one pound advantage, your total percentage of weight loss is 1.94%. There are five players left to weigh in. Anton is next. It's been a fantastic week for me. I get $500 for every pound I lose, and all week, the number in my head has been 11 pounds. That's $5,500 if I can pull this off, and I'm excited. I, I can't wait to see the numbers roll. If you were ever going to have a good number, tonight's the night. <laughs> exactly. Anton, when you first started this competition, you weighed 447 pounds. Your previous weight was 339 pounds. Your current weight is. I'm excited for eight, but man, I was really shooting for a higher number. I'll take the cash, though. <laughs> Merry Christmas. It's going to be a good Christmas. We're going shopping. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah. Anton. Yeah. You just earned yourself $4,000. Thank you. Yeah. Anton, since America first saw you weigh in 10 weeks ago, you have lost 116 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. You lost eight pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss of 2.36%. There are four players left to weigh in. Vinny is next. There you go, Vinny. Right, Vinny. Here we go, baby boy. With my three pound advantage, I know that I'm probably gonna be safe, so I'm not worried about the elimination. What I'm worried about is hitting this 100 pounds in 10 weeks. I came here with two goals in mind, get rid of diabetes and get a 100 pound head start on what I gotta lose. I'm right here with a chance to do it, and I know it's gonna happen. This is a big night for you. You're nine pounds away from losing 100 pounds. Vinny, when you first started this competition, you weighed 426 pounds. Your previous weight was 335 pounds. To be safe, you need to have lost more than four pounds. Your current weight is. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Vinny, this is a big night for you. You're nine pounds away from losing 100 pounds. To be safe, you need to have lost more than four pounds. Your current weight is. Yeah! Oh, yeah! That's what I'm talking about! Yeah! Oh! oh my God! Yes! Yes! Woo! Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Golly! I worked so hard this week. Oh my gosh! I, I was, I was shooting for ten, hoping for nine, and somehow got eleven. So. <laughs> You know, I, I, I was, uh, I don't even know what to say. I don't know. Y'all say something. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Oh my gosh. That's my boy right there. Big Vinny. Congratulations, Vinny. Yeah. Can, I, can I get a hug? Can I get a hug here? <laughs> oh. oh. Sorry. Yeah. It was a freaking 11. I mean, I killed it. I, I beat it by two pounds. I, I went over by two pounds. I'm just so blessed and thankful that I got to be here for that. Bam. Vinny, since America first saw you weigh in 10 weeks ago, you have lost 102 pounds. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, man. Nice. Vinny, you lost 11 pounds this week. With your three pound advantage, your total percentage of weight loss is 4.18%. Wow. With two players below you, Vinny, you are definitely above that yellow line. Mm -hmm. yeah, Becky, you're up. All right, Becky. Go, go, Becky. Becky, when you first started this competition, you weighed 238 pounds. In order to be safe from elimination tonight, you need to have lost more than four pounds. Your current weight is... Yes! I'm good with that. Becky's a totally different person. And look at that waistline. I mean, the waist is incredible. It's like, has shrunk completely. Mm. But I, I feel like you're just happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm at pre-marriage weight. I'm pretty excited for my husband to see me because he's never seen me like this. When Bonnie left, she said, win it for the old farts. And I'm one step closer to the final four for, uh, for, the, for the old farts. Becky, you lost five pounds this week. 
for a total percentage of weight loss of 2.75%. Yeah. Good enough for second place. All right, I'll take that. <laughs> I'm now touching the yellow line. I'm one person from going home. Ramon. Come on, 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 Ramon. Even though I don't have an advantage, and lucky enough, I don't have that disadvantage. But right now, I just have my hard work to go off. And I have to go on that scale and see if that hard work paid off. Ramon, when you first started this competition, you weighed 355 pounds. Your previous weight was 280. To be above the yellow line and safe from elimination tonight, you need to have lost more than six pounds. Your current weight is. I was, I was pushing for a nine. I, I thought I had it this week. I mean... <sighs> you know, for as hard as you worked, minus five, it is disappointing, but it's still minus five. I'm very happy with yeah. always, you know, not coming up here and putting up a plus, but damn, it's like, you know, when you work so hard, you got that yeah. goal in mind. Ah, I want to be over that stinking yellow line. Yeah. Just keep moving. Just oh, yeah. keep going. Oh yeah, it's, it's a bump in the road, but it ain't, it ain't gonna stop me. Never. Never. I only got a five. Sure, it's a loss. I'm definitely proud with the loss every week. But a five? Yeah. I'm definitely under that yellow line. And I'm so close to the end. Ramon, since America first saw you weigh in 10 weeks ago, you've lost 87 pounds. You lost five pounds this week, Ramon, for a total percentage of weight loss of 1.83%. Anton, with two players below you, you are definitely above that yellow line. You are safe. Ramon, with just one player left to weigh in, you are definitely below that yellow line. It comes down to John and Sonny. The man who earned a one pound advantage and the woman he gave a one pound disadvantage to. Sonny, come on up. I'm nervous every way in. That goes without saying. But tonight is like a whole no nother level of nervousness. Knowing how notorious I am for getting a low number after having a high number, and now I have a one pound disadvantage. I, it just, I'm so nervous. Sonny, when you first started this competition, you weighed 277 pounds. John gave you a one pound disadvantage. To beat John and guarantee that you are above the yellow line, you need to have lost more than five pounds. It's all boiled down to this moment, and I'm holding my breath. In my mind, I'm done. I'm, I'm headed home. Your current weight is... Sonny, when you first started this competition, you weighed 277 pounds. John gave you a one-pound disadvantage. It's down to the two of you. To beat John and guarantee that you are above the yellow line, you need to have lost more than five pounds. I have to lose more weight than John did this week, and he outweighs me by more than 100 pounds to stay safe because of the one pound disadvantage that he gave to me. I'm, I'm nervous. Your current weight is. to say. Being that it's Thanksgiving week, it just, to take away something that I've earned, it just doesn't seem right. Sonny, you lost by one one hundredth of a percent. There's your number, Sonny. Your total percentage of weight loss, including the one pound disadvantage, is 1.93. My heart about jumped out of my chest. The one and only person that it benefited me to give them the disadvantage is the person I chose. Are you kidding me? 
Sonny, this does not take away from everything that you have done. You have lost 75 pounds since you first started with The Biggest Loser. That's right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I'm devastated. I really am devastated. The fact that it came down to that one pound disadvantage. Sunny, since America first saw you weigh in 10 weeks ago, you have lost 75 pounds. John, you and Delvet survived to see another day by one one hundredth of a percent. Ramon and Sunny, I'm sorry to tell you that you have fallen below the yellow line. The rest of you will have one hour to decide who to send home, and I will meet you in the elimination room to hear your decision. See you then. Being below the yellow line with Sunny is tough. We're teammates, but I fell under the yellow line because I couldn't hit the number I needed to hit. But it's got to be tougher for Sunny. She got placed with a one pound disadvantage, and that's what made her under that yellow line. It's a tough pill to swallow. It sucks to be here. You know, I just, I didn't pull the number. I, I thought I had a great week. You know, I want to be here more than anything. And I love having a fight against you guys. When I got to this house, I was hiding behind, you know, a persona wild and joking all the time. I was hiding the fact that, you know, I was unhappy and lonely and I failed in a lot of things in my life. And when I got here, I've learned so much about myself. And I found stuff in this house that I never thought I'd find. <sighs> good, good friend. Better friends than I could ever known. And <laughs> I found love here. I have a lot to give. And I got a lot more years to live. A lot more to live for. A lot. I can't say that I need to be here more than Sunny. But I can say that I need to be here for myself and that I do have something to finish. I feel like that, um, that I did what I needed to to stay safe this week. And um, I just know that, you know, being here was an uh, answer to my prayers. <laughs> and um, it's been like a family. And I appreciate you all. And we're going to stay close forever. But I want to stay. I've, you know, learned through the past, you know, 10 weeks here that you finish what you start. And I want to finish this. I want to see it through to the end. And I want to get every ounce of wisdom and strength that I can get from this place to carry into my life at home. I, uh, I hope, Sonny, you know that this doesn't discount anything you did. And... I, I feel so bad. I figured I was, my time here was done and, and, and I get another week. And one of you two doesn't. I'm so sorry. This is a tough decision tonight. John gave Sonny the one pound disadvantage and John also has a chance to sort of save face tonight and not vote for Sonny. We'll just see how the voting goes in the elimination room tonight. Coming up, the biggest is a transformation moment. See how the eliminated player looks today. The Biggest Loser Club is changing lives. Want to be a contestant on The Biggest Loser? Log on to NBC.com for details. Tonight, your vote was between Ramon and Sunny. In the event of a tie, it is the person with the lowest percentage of weight loss who will be automatically eliminated. And tonight, that player is Ramon. So it takes two votes to eliminate you, Ramon, and three votes to eliminate you, Sunny. We're going to start with you, Vinny. 
This is not an easy choice, no matter what. Um, Sonny has become somebody that I will always look up to. And Ramon's become my best friend here. Without him, I don't know if I'd have made it this far. So when it all come down to it, you know, Ramon has been my best friend here. And I'm sorry that I had to put your name down, Sonny. Sonny, that's one vote for you. If you receive two more votes, you will be eliminated. Becky. Ramon is, is like one of my kids, and I'm so proud of him. Sonny is, is my roommate, and she's been my best friend. We've just kept each other going, and I don't know without Sonny if I could have made it through. And so that's why I had to vote, I'm sorry, for Ramon. Ramon, that's one vote for you, and Sonny, you have one vote. Ramon, if you receive one more vote, you will be eliminated. Sonny, if you receive two more votes, you will be eliminated. John. I was listening when we were deliberating, and I really kind of resonated with what one of these people had to say. Ramon mentioned how he was a competitor, and and he wanted to compete, and it seemed like he was pointing at me. And I thought, you know what? I want to compete against you. I'm, I'm not one bit afraid of you, Ramon. And so I'm going to vote for Sonny tonight. Sonny, that's two votes for you. Ramon, you have one vote. Let's hear what Anton has to say. Wow, that's amazing. Um, you know, both of you guys are tremendous people, and, uh, you know, just like Vinny said, you know, it's uh, one of those situations where, you know, you guys have been tight from day one, and uh, there's no way either one of you guys would write each other's names down. And uh, Sonny and I have been the same way. And just to make it short and sweet, I voted for Ramon. You started off by saying that's amazing. What, what did you mean? It's just amazing what we're saying and what we're doing. You know, first off, we have to give someone a one pound disadvantage. If you want to make this a gentleman's game, so to speak, give the one pound disadvantage to Vinny. That's the person that's going to hurt the least. John chose to give it to Sonny, and now John tries to break Sonny's back by voting for her out of the house. That's just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought about it and thought about it, and it wasn't an easy thing to do. The easy thing to do would have been to just give it to Vinny. But instead, I did what's best for me. That's what I did. There's no question that John did what's best for him in placing the one pound disadvantage on Sonny. Clearly, if John had placed it on anyone else, he would be gone. We get that. But here, he could have voted differently. You know, Sonny was the one person that's below the yellow line that earned her way above it. And that's what I'm talking about. You could have made up for what you did in there. If you truly didn't want to do it, you truly were sorry about it, you could have stood up right here and you could have voted for Ramon. Nothing against Ramon. I love this guy. But truly, your weight loss this week put you truly below the yellow line. And that's yep. the difference that I see. Well, this is my vote. This you is your you, vote. Yeah, this, no doubt. You, like you always say, Absolutely. you're, you're one you vote do in the what house. You want. I'm just I'm saying. I'm one vote in the house. I'm and just I saying. My vote. You don't don't ask for sympathy for putting Sonny on the one pound advantage and then turn around and vote for her. Who did again. I ask? Who did he I voted ask? for Sonny twice today. So let's talk to you, Ramon. Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you that you have been eliminated. I I feel good right now. You know, even though I'm going home, you know, I can hold my head up high and. You know, there's so much that I get to live for now. Mm -hmm. Ramon, I'm sorry to say with two votes, you have been eliminated. You are not the biggest loser. But we will see you again at the marathon. Sure will. Best yeah. of luck. Time to say Thanks. goodbye. Thanks. <sighs> oh, All right, Mama. Yeah. Oh, you know I will. Okay. Keep on fighting. Yeah. Love you, dude. We'll see you, God. I came to this ranch alone and dying and unhealthy. Damn it, you got diabetes. Huh. Did you know that? I was always constantly lying to myself. And you know, from coming on the ranch and being on The Biggest Loser, you know, there is no lying anymore. Young blood! It feels like a lifetime ago, but in 10 weeks, I've done so many crazy things and I found great friends. We're going ring shopping. <laughs> That's all I want to say. Just the biggest accomplishment of all is just beating diabetes. Gone. Gone. Awesome. 
everything is just coming into place right now and I'm, I'm ecstatic about it. You know, I met Jessica and she's, she's the love of my life. She's, she's the other half. With Jess on my side, we can win the at home and the Biggest Loser title because one of us is going to win that spot back from winning that marathon. Ah! That's what I'm talking about. America, next time you see me, I'm going to have the surprise of a lifetime for Jess. I'm here in LA and I'm coming to see Jess. You know, we haven't seen each other in a while. You know, I might have missed the makeover on the ranch, but I went out and I did something better. I got my own. I'm ready to shock Jess. I'm ready to show everybody my new look. Hi, babe. I can't believe it's you. <laughs> oh my god, your hair. What do you think? It looks amazing. You like it? I love it. You look like a different person. This does not look like the Ramon that I had last seen at the ranch. His hair's gone, and his facial hair is gone, and he's dressed up in these nice clothes, and he just, he looks great. You look great. Before Biggest Loser, I weighed 355 pounds. Today, I weigh 245 pounds. I've lost 110 pounds. You know, getting to train with Jessica is one in a million. You know, we started out training together as friends and our relationship grew to where you know i know i i love this girl with all my heart we're back together we're training hard and we're ready to win this marathon and that, and that's awesome the old jessica and ramon are very different from the new jessica and ramon we were both so unhealthy and we both had so many things in our life that we couldn't do because of our weight and now you know sky's the limit so remember that bucket list that you're always talking about on the ranch? Mm -hmm. And how, you know, all the things on there that, you know, that you couldn't do before are, are things that you want to do now. And yeah. So I want to take you on the ultimate date. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? I'm not going to tell you. So I got some super huge plans and it is definitely going to be a date to remember. Come on, let me show you. Okay. Let's go. Look, babe. That's what we're doing. So I've decided to take Jess to skydive Elsinore. We're going skydiving. I am so excited to go skydiving. Something I've always wanted to do. We're going to cross off one of those things on my bucket list, and we're going to do it together as a couple, and that's awesome. Ah, here we go. We're jumping out of a freaking plane. Who does this? We do. This is something I told Jess that I would never do. You know, you'd have to push me out of a plane, and right now, I should be scared, and I'm not. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm freaking out a little bit, but it's cool. My heart's beating a million feet a minute, but <laughs> burning calories. All right, man. Here we go. This symbolizes, you know, shedding off all that poundage shedding off the old lifestyle that we both had. I'm ready to open all these doors and we're ready to get busy. Welcome to the new life. coasting down to the ground. I'm thinking about all that I've overcome at the ranch and just a few short months ago, I was so unhealthy that I was dying inside. I was 50 years old. And now I'm jumping out of planes and I'm having a great time and I'm with the girl that I love and I want to be with for the rest of my life. This is the life right here. Ah! Damn! That was so cool. That was awesome, yes. <laughs> this is the most amazing experience I've ever had in my life. Awesome day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? You want a lot more dates like this? Yes! The next step for Jess and I is, uh, you know, taking a bigger plunge than skydiving. And it's uh, coming sooner and later.